Good morning. Good morning. I'll try to, um, I have to be a bit loud now because I'm wearing my mask. And then when I take my mask off to preach, then it's not so loud, so it's hard to regulate the volume of, the, of my microphone. But anyway, we're, we're worshiping this morning. Next Sunday, we worship again at, um, at 9 o'clock. And next Sunday, we will be remembering the saints who have departed from us from Lakeview Lutheran Church this past year. And they are uh, Barbara Erickson and Lyle Fenske. So um, it is All Saints Weekend, and despite the... Um, unusualness of how we're doing worship these days, uh, we will still remember them next weekend. So I invite you to join us. Remember to also um, think about if you're going to participate in the drive through lasagna dinner that's coming up on November, oh, I'm going to get the date wrong, but I think it's November 15th or 16th or 17th or 18th or 19th or somewhere in there. <laughs> it's a Tuesday night. Remember what? 17th. 17th. Terry's yelling 17th. Um, remember to make your reservations soon so Laura can keep track of um, who's coming and what we will be cooking. Because we can only, we will only serve those who have made reservations. Because that's who we're going to cook for to be sure that there's no wasted food. So please call the church office to make a reservation if, if that's good for you. Um, December 10th is a ways off, but it is the next blood drive at Lakeview, and we've had um, some very, very successful blood drives this year. Um, we're way above where we sh were last year, and we still have, an, and that's in the total, and we still have one more blood drive to go. So um, keep that date in mind and plan to uh, participate as you're able. Food Pantry's been very busy, uh, 30 uh, 40 some people this last households this last week I can't remember exactly but um, it's pretty uh, amazing how how active our food pantry has been Nancy Stillwell will be singing bringing in the sheaves this morning uh, I always knew there was a refrain I didn't know that there were actual verses but she's going to sing all three of them so you might be surprised that there are verses as well I will invite you to silence everything as I will, and we will prepare our hearts for worship during Lynn's prelude. Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And let us pray. You are holy, God. Help us to always recognize Jesus as our Messiah, who was raised from the soil to new life. Give us hearts that are willing to love you and to love our neighbors. Give us hands and feet that willingly put that love exemplified by Jesus into compassionate actions. 
In your name we pray. Amen. The hymn of praise this morning, for those of you who have a, an, an ELW hymnal at home, maybe nobody does besides Laura, but I know she's there. It is page 525, You Are Holy. So I hope you were doing that in your living rooms, um, singing two different parts, because that would sound really cool. From the 22nd chapter of Matthew, we read, When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked Jesus a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. Jesus said to them, how is it then that David by the spirit calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer nor from that day did anyone dare to ask Jesus any more questions. Well, if you are as old as I am, or as old as Lynn Najem, you probably remember this. Double your pleasure, double your fun, with double mint, double mint, double mint gum. And then in that in that commercial, that's a commercial, by the way, for you young folks, in that commercial there were always female twins, usually riding a tandem bicycle. Well, today, we're not talking about God. But we are talking about the double commandments. And perhaps we could honestly say that when we uplift those double commandments, we do indeed double our pleasure and double our fun. Loving God and loving neighbor have become so prominent, so routine in our Christian tradition that we become somewhat, they become somewhat superficial for us. We often don't seem to hold a deep and a serious understanding of what this double commandment means for our lives or what the author of Matthew may have been trying to imply when he recorded, the, he or she recorded those words. We don't seem to relate today those double commandments to all the other laws and all the other mandates in our Bible. So we need to understand that biblical love, as expressed by Jesus in this, in this gospel text, is not, not a call 
to have warm, affectionate feelings for others. The double commandments don't call us into having fake emotions. But they do demand, they do command a stubborn and a steadfast commitment that may not always be popular in our world today or in a world that tends to promote wealth and power and prestige as what's being most important. In regard to those 613 biblical laws, Jesus says that all of them, each and every one of them, hangs on these double commandments to love. So in this Bible, Jesus is calling us to be totally committed to God and to our neighbors. He calls that love. He makes it clear that when we love our neighbors, we learn how to love God. We love God, also, he makes clear, by loving our neighbors. When we love our neighbors, even love our enemies, we are empowered to imitate the Creator God's outrageous generosity and God's grace. Our love of neighbors and our love of enemies lets them know that we are God's children. We often choose to condemn our neighbors. We often choose to condemn our enemies. That's why we call them enemies. But that's not what Jesus is calling us to do in this lesson. So what about all those laws that you've talked about with me over the years in Leviticus and Deuteronomy and all over the place? What about them? Jesus never said that we should ignore them, not once. In fact, in Matthew, the author of Matthew records that Jesus said he didn't come to abolish the law, but he came to fulfill the law. Now, some people might suggest that that means that we can forget about those 613 laws. But I don't think that's what Jesus meant. I believe that Jesus meant that all of those laws should be considered, and they should be considered in regard to today's double commandments, the commandment of loving God and loving neighbor. Jesus enacted that ideology for us that day that he healed on the Sabbath. To the Pharisees that day, they were the law keepers. To the Pharisees, Jesus was disregarding God's command to rest on a holy day. Instead, though, Jesus was upholding the law by having a firm commitment that day to the needs of his neighbors who were blind and who were disabled. Jesus was loving his neighbors. So when people tell me that the law in Leviticus chapter 18, 22 condemns homosexuality or anyone oriented in that way, I always have to pause and then consider how that response to the law is not expressing a loving commitment to God and to our neighbor. By judging and condemning someone based on that law, how is the double commandment that we're hearing today from Matthew being upheld? When people tell me that the law in Leviticus chapter 19, 28 condemns any tattoos or gashes on the body, then I have to think about how I should use that double commandment to interpret that text, because I know that many of you out there in TV land have a tattoo. In Deuteronomy 22.5, it says that a woman shouldn't wear men's apparel, and a man shouldn't wear women's apparel. If you can figure out exactly what men's apparel is and what women's apparel is, good for you. But some people would use this law to condemn a person who is transgender. But again, how does the double commandment that we're reading about and talking about today guide us to understand, understand and to respond to this law of not wearing the opposite gender's clothing? And in Leviticus 21.17, Aidan and uh, Samantha and uh, uh, who else is on there? Ben and um, uh, 
Spencer, listen closely. Leviticus 21.17 literally commands that a person who curses a mother or father should be put to death. It doesn't say they should be put in time out. It says they should be put to death. Think about it. Would killing children who have cursed their parents after the parents imposed an early curfew, or because they won't allow their kids to date until the age, the age of 16, would cursing those parents, as you've all done, really uplift the double commandment of God to love neighbor and to love, uh, to love God and to love neighbor? If we put kids to death, like the Bible says, for cursing parents, we would quickly wipe out society, and that would be in conflict with God's call in creation for humans to multiply and be fruitful and to fill the earth. So when we are about to say, the Bible says, or when somebody says those words to me, I think we should always step back and consider what the Bible says in regard to that double commandment that Jesus gives us today. That's the commandment, one more time that calls on us to make a commitment to God and to our neighbor. How do you and I interpret the law when we know the most important and the greatest commandments that there are? Amen. Nancy Stilwell will sing the hymn today. It is Bringing in the Sheaves. It is not part of a Lutheran publication, so you can't look it up. But if you're watching this via video throughout the week, the words will appear on your screen. Thank you, Nancy. Bringing in the sheaves, bringing in 
part of the song when just threw that in there as a nice little ending. <laughs> Let us pray. Loving God, teach us to love you by loving our neighbors. Give us the will to use the double commandments as the foundation for how we understand your holy scriptures. We are grateful for the many opportunities to reach out during this time, and we give thanks for our food pantry. May we support one another right now in ways that can reduce stress and anxiety during the pandemic. We uplift all people who are struggling with emotional health and suicidal thoughts. Bring hope to the people of the West who continue to struggle with wildfires. Move hearts to love you by loving others without regard to race, gender, or orientation. Make each one of us willing to stand up against bullying and human trafficking. Bless the union of Aidan Dalton and actually Pekelet, which will take place this next Friday evening. Bring hope to anyone who is grieving today, and make your healing touch known to those who are in poor health, including Joyce, Mary, Pam, Georgia, Ellen, and anyone else whom we now name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. I invite you to join me as together we pray the traditional words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Invite us into a time for meditation during Lynn's music. Receive the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Love God. Love your neighbor and love yourself. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>